scheme to clear this matter because this matter it is it comes up during elections and goes down after elections it comes up during elections goes away after elections you win the election we want you to we want to slay that ghost today here can you share with us from the beginning to the end how it went and my second question is that uh, where i come from like victoria is next to it what do you think you what do will you do as the minister for maritime to improve the lives of the people there in terms of fish industry the fishing industry is almost collapsing what what programs do you think you will put in place to make sure that livelihoods are supported there by by the people who are doing the fishing business or fishing in in the Lake victoria area Chair, maybe uh, since he had begun answering that one on academic credentials, besides what you would say CS nominee to young Kenyans, uh, and from what Junette is saying, it's clear that many people who serve in public office suffer certain prejudices from Kenyans uh, regarding the academic credentials and all that in your past. Probably you can uh, contextualize that in that. I am certain there are many Kenyans who are surprised that you can even converse in English. <laughs> there, are many, there are many who are asking how you would be able to be vetted. I understand. You cannot converse in English. I understand, Mr. Speaker, and uh, I must first of all say it is, it is almost normal uh, for people to cast doubt of Wapwani's. Sometimes, and Owen Bay and Mishi Boko probably will bear me witness. But we, are, we can and we are as qualified as any other Kenyan. Now, Mr. Speaker, I want to, to walk you through my eco, uh, educational journey and where I drew my inspiration. More than what you did? No. To respond to the question, okay. I want to, to, to walk you through how I achieved what I achieved, and I'll continue to achieve. With brevity. Without a doubt. Mm. Mr. Speaker, first of all, I want to mention that uh, I drew my inspiration from one Professor Ali Mazrui. Professor Ali Mazrui did not succeed in his Cambridge examination to be admitted in the university to attain his first degree. That aside, Mr. Speaker, I want to mention to this house. Ali Mazuri is one of the, the most, most renowned, renowned scholar and admirable scholars. In we love him. He's one of our own from the coast. He's coastal not region. just the coastals. I love him <laughs> even more. I named one of my you, you must. I named one of my brothers Mazuri. Mr. Speaker, there is absolutely no way you cannot love Ali Mazuri given his, his contribution to basically the general well-being of our society. But Mr. Speaker, this is the point. I want Kenyans to know that historical struggles are real, are real. Someone should never imagine for a minute that if they come from places or spaces of comfort, that there may be a level, level playing field for everyone. Some of us come from very poor background. Mr. Speaker, if you look at my CV, you will see I actually had to take a break for one year, transiting from primary into secondary. Why did I do that? Because simply my parents couldn't afford school fees. I was not, I was not living in an environment that allowed me that opportunity to be able to quickly prosper in matters of education. That is why, Mr. Speaker, I can tell this committee today, and I want many Kenyans to listen to me, do not ever imagine your hope dies by your previous struggles. We suffered. But what gives me pride is that we could turn that around. I actually turned it around. When I found the slightest opportunity for self-improvement, which I believe is a continual process, I grabbed it. And uh, 
I'm glad to the laws of the country, laws of the land. There are processes that allows someone to improve and progress in matters of education. So yes, I did not do well in my secondary school. I got a D minus, no doubt. But Mr. Speaker, I turned that around. Today, as I sit here, I hold two degrees that are before you. Mr. Speaker, I am on my pathway to attain a master's degree from the most prestigious university in the world. And that is achieved by determination. Mr. Speaker, I want to tell Junet, Honorable Junet, that first let me begin by telling Honorable Kimani Ichungwa. Kimani Ichungwa, I contributed to my own school fees in secondary school. I had an understanding at that time with my principal that he released me earlier than any other student because I needed to go work. And I did, and I contributed. At that point, what was my priority? To conclude KCAC. And I knew deep in my mind that I will always in my life have a chance to further pursue and acquire more knowledge. And uh, like I said, I would have been very surprised if this question did not come up, because it comes up every time there's an opportunity for me to do something. <laughs> every time. It started when I was running for MP. It started when I was running for MP in 2007. Big conversation. And that time, they even actually said that uh, my nursery certification was fake, my kindergarten. But uh, we succeeded. When I was running for governor, Mr. Speaker, and I'm saying this so that we can, I hope we can, we can bring this to a permanent uh, closure. When I was running for governor in 2013, it was one of the biggest campaign issues. I know there were even attempts to, to bribe some people in the institutions that I was with. Somebody once told me, someone came to me and told me, Bana, we've been, we've been told to suspend your degree to purport we're undertaking some, some investigation, just to not to allow me to meet the, the required timeline to submit my papers. But we, 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 we overcame that and, and moved on. Then, Mr. Speaker, you also will remember, because it is a matter of public knowledge, the administration of President Uhuru Kenyatta, particularly the first term, had quite some issues with me. So again, there were those who felt that they may have an opportunity now to permanently remove me from the political uh, equation by dealing with my education credentials. So Mr. Speaker, I report before this house, there is no government institution be it Higher Learning Commission, DCI, EACC, even a judicial process, even a judicial process that has not investigated my credentials. And I commit before this house. In fact, they should be looking at this space. Probably if we succeed, if you nominate me, and we do well, the next, if I'm approved, the next vetting, you should, you should see a PhD, Mr. Speaker. I'm telling you, watch this space. If I come back here, if God wills, you approve me. We do some real work. Better the lives of the Kenyan people. You'll call me Dr. Hassan Joho, the next one, sir. What Mr. Was Speaker, the on uh, the other matter.